this journey between um, TEDx, Singularity University, and now BOMA, if, if you could tell us what, what connects all the dots, what, what's the link between all those dots? What, what's the common ground between all those projects? Well, firstly, thank you. It's fabulous to be here today. As Michelle said, we started off many years ago in Paris uh, with this very small TEDx. Um, well, I grew up in a white Jewish family in apartheid South Africa, the home of Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela. And I saw at a very early age how systems can be optimized to bring great pain and suffering. When I was little, we'd often go to the bushveld, and in those days it wasn't a high-end yurt experience, it was very basic, and we'd sit in a randavel in a boma at nighttime and we'd tell stories. Uh, my grandmother was the chief storyteller, and one of the, uh, my favorite stories she would tell uh, was a story called The Gods Must Be Crazy. Have any of you ever heard of the story The Gods Must Be Crazy? Les dieux sont tombés sur la tête, vous vous rappelez de ce film Yeah, so it's about a tribe of bushmen who can feel um, civilization encroaching on them. And um, one day there's a little aeroplane flying overhead and the pilot throws a, a Coke bottle out of the window. And it falls at the feet of the tribal head. And he thinks this surely must be a sign from God. And he picks up the bottle and it's hard, it's round, it's beautiful, it's shiny, it's something the tribe has never seen. And he takes it back to the tribe and they're amazed by this new technology from the gods. And it can do all these incredible things. It can, you know, it's hard, it can uh, crush the corn, it can make new patterns, it can smooth out the leather. And um, the whole tribe wants to use this new piece of technology. But they're really upset because the gods only sent them this one a uh, new piece of technology and soon fights start to break out and jealousy as to who should use this piece of technology and when. And so the tribal leader decides he's going to take the decision to throw this glass bottle back up to the gods. But it throws, he throws it up and it falls on his daughter's head. So then he goes into the bush and tries to bury this, uh, new, this new piece of technology from the god. But the genie's out of the bottle and the whole tribe still is fighting and they're all bad feelings because they can still feel the presence of this new piece of technology. And so he decides to set off on an odyssey into the bush um, and find a way, a journey, to throw the, the, this, this thing off the edge of the earth uh, to make it disappear forever. Well, I sort of feel we all are at that Coke bottle moment where we've unleashed these exponential and accelerating technologies. And many of us don't know the many unintended consequences of these technologies or how to get ahead of these technologies. And somehow this time we can't throw our technologies off the edge of the earth. And so I've spent my whole life thinking about stories and how stories really affect systems. And I've worked a lot on systems change, be they technological, uh, political, social, scientific, and how they really can be optimized to deliver both great good and bad. And so I don't have to tell this crowd, but we live in this crazy exponential world of technology accelerating, uh, social media connecting us more and more. But I think only some of us are coming to realize at this point that these, uh, um, these big technological companies, these unicorns, many of them don't really understand or the, the consequences of some of the technology that they've been building. And more importantly, that the effect they're having on all of our lives, our humanity, and all of our personal happiness. And so the question we like to ask, or the questions we're constantly asking at BOMA are, how do we think about these future technology companies? And how do we get ahead of some of the ethical issues? Um, and how do we really design them in a way that they're more centered for humanity? Um, how do we lead in a future that looks nothing like the past, that's changing so incredibly rapidly? And in a world where a lot of these big issues have to be both deeply local and global, what sort of governance systems do we need? And what sort of emergent, agile systems do we need to create to make the right kind of decisions for humanity? And finally, how do we create a world in where we are actually creating this, the, we are, the world isn't happening for us, but we are creating this world. And so it's amazing to be here because this really is, um, the, the true launch of BOMA in France and uh, this team, the BOMA France team, is one of the founding nodes of this new network that we're building all over the world, a network of people who share values and really want to start tackling these very difficult, complicated questions about where we go as humanity. And so I just want to say thank you to Michelle for organizing this event today. Thank you. Je voudrais aussi... Allez-y, allez-y. Merci. 
Vous savez, je voudrais aussi vous remercier parce que à chaque fois, ces aventures ont commencé à à peu près une centaine, 150 personnes. C'est comme ça qu'a démarré TEDx Paris en, en, en 2009. C'est comme ça qu'avait démarré l'échappée volée en, en 2014. Et c'est comme ça que, d'une certaine manière, démarre aujourd'hui Boma. Est-ce que vous avez une question pour Lara, peut-être Alors, attends, j'ai un truc génial. C'est ça. Tiens, regarde. Tu peux, tu peux parler dedans. Like this Ouais. So it's not exactly a question, if I may, but just a very quick comment. I just came from Israel from Cyber Week, one of the main show around cyber, more like for governments and things like that. And the main theme, just to echo what you just said, the main theme that I had with some of our Israeli counterparts was ethics. And what are we going to do, for example, with ethics of robots, including in uh, weapon systems? So just want to echo what you say, that ethics seems, even in the military world, to be really at the forefront of what people need to think about now. Une autre question peut-être ou un commentaire Personne Me, I have a question for you. I have a question mm -hmm. because I think you, you're you're master chief in building successful communities. You've done it with TEDx. You've done it with SU. Um, I know that many people here are trying to build communities in their companies. Um, what are the the rules to to create successful communities? I think some of the, m the key rules is that, firstly, you have to create a community that shares values. That is very important. Um, I think it also has to be emergent in that you can't have a set compass when you're creating a community, especially a community inside an organization. It really has to reflect the values of that organization. I think a lot of the, I believe, our youth are demanding that corporations do have these social values and that they align behind these social values and that more and more so the companies that are going to be successful are the companies that um, are able to show that they have a, a more of a social impact compass and that they, they can give meaning to their employees. And so creating ideas around how do you enhance your organization to embrace that idea and create connections. The other point I'll say is that I think technology, as it connects us more and more, is also alienating us more and more. We see a rise in depression, in suicide rates, um, in opioid use. And I think people are yearning for the sense of connectivity in many ways. And I don't just mean when they leave work, I'm at work as well. And so finding ways to reflect those values and, and create connectivity for people, I think, is a very important part of what um, corporations need to be doing right now.